music will reset to something big coming up on your screen. Just settle back and relax, cause you're gonna get a whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing, a whole lot of loving from me. tonight anyhow you know i came home from uh, gosh dog it i came home i look like i've been printed again from the files uh did that to me in ohio once oh i came uh, i came home today you know from pebble beach the golf tournament <laughs> the end is before the end Tournament, tournament. <laughs> you gonna go? Yeah. I was gone eight days, and I walked into my house, and you know, Jeannie, Jeannie missed me. Then she raised the revolver again. <laughs> this just wasn't my day. At breakfast, I found out that my kid Dino joined one of those motorcycle surfing clubs. He stands on the seat as he drives through the car wash. I called him out that he threatened to leave home. And I threatened to leave the door open. You know, some, you know something? I figured out having kids is hereditary. Which ain't a bad word. Hereditary. <laughs> you didn't think I know what that meant. For the benefit of you folks who never flew in one. Anyway, having kids is hereditary. Yeah, if your folks didn't have any, chances are you won't. <laughs> Dirty Paul. And now, Jeannie gave me that joke. And now, uh, Jeannie's given me a lot of jokes since we've been married. But that's the first one she didn't have to go to the hospital for. <laughs> now, don't you go away, because I'm going to wash up. Let me tell you a little story about hands. It's on the show about six, eight months or so. And I had just finished showing Dean a sketch. And uh, I went back into the dressing room to say, come on, let's go out and do it, pal. And I called him pal. He called me pal. And... Uh, I re he was sitting on the couch. I reached down to help him up, and my hands were like this, and his hands were like this, and they grabbed and looked like two lobster claws, you know. And he looked at my hands, and he said, what's the matter with your hands? And I went, well, you know, when I was in high school, I played guard on the football team, and, you know, I, I didn't wrap my fingers, and... You know, they stepped on my fingers, and they're all busted and broken up. And I looked at his hands, and I said, and you? He said, well, you know, he said, uh, I was a semi-pro fighter. And he said, I must have been as dumb as you were because I didn't wrap my knuckles, and they're all busted. So when the two of us do this, that's what you see. One of the things, if you notice, with Dean and hands He's got a cigarette in his hand a lot. And sometimes the fingers curl up a little bit. He can't control them sometimes. That's from his fighting days.
Question. <laughs> Excuse me, mademoiselle. Would you like a little something before dinner? Well, that would be nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How about you? Ah! You touch me and I'll wrap you right in your head of pasta. <laughs> Anything you like, sir. Would you like to see a menu? Good idea. Menu! First, the wine list. There's some wine, sir. Could I take this menu home? Anything you like, sir. Now, do you see something that you like? Are you putting me on? can't put my finger on it. <laughs> the ribs are very nice and tender today, sir. Can I pick them up with my hands? <laughs> Only if you promise to respect them afterwards. <laughs> I'll have the rump roast. I, <laughs> I saw it first. Yeah. Pick something else. Well, then, uh, 
How about a cold shower? No, no, forget it. Forget it. I'll, I'll have the chicken. You'll never be able to finish it all, sir. Trust me. Trust me. And for dessert, may I recommend the lady fingers? Are they fresh? <laughs> Just don't turn your back on them. <laughs> And what is the lady's pleasure? I'll find out after dinner. <laughs> what will you have? I'll have the press duck. I'll get right on the duck. Hey! <laughs> One duck, clean and press for the lady. No starch, a dollar sixty. And uh, we'll also have onion soup. Onion soup. The toss salad. Toss salad. Clams oregano and oregano. And a bottle of white wine. Bottle of white Would wine. Would that take long? I'll do the best I can, sir. Okay. <laughs> hmm, what kept you? <laughs> the chef has a toothache. Oh, good. Now for a cloth salad. Here's a salad. Garlic. Rub the bowl with garlic. Okay. <laughs> One toss salad. Okay. That's a toss salad, sir. Everything is fresh. You notice that the hands never leave the body. Okay. A little parsley, sir. Right here. I think you're going to really enjoy this, sir. Here we have and little Trust me, madam. Okay. And ooh, good luck to you. And here's a tomato. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wonderful. Yes, sir, just hold this for a minute. Okay. <laughs> you gotta be quick. <laughs> and now, for a little of the dressing right here. Beautiful. And I think you're gonna enjoy this part, sir. Here it is. And some music for your listening pleasure. Schenectady. No, I never was in Schenectady. Neither was I. It must have been a couple other guys. <laughs> but I still have a feeling that I've seen your face. <laughs> face. Someplace else. No, it's always been right here. Top of my neck. Maybe you've seen me on television. Oh, oh no, I've never been on television. <laughs> See, is, is it all, all right if I if, if if I join you? I I just dropped in for a little drink to settle my nerves before I go to work. Work. <laughs> what, what what sort of work do you do? I'm an airline pilot. <laughs> Get 
get to be an airline pilot. I used to, I used to be a bus. I used to be a bu bus driver. <laughs> but I, I quit. Too, too many, too many drunks on the road. <laughs> what do you fly? Horseman oh, those big, big gray, gray met metal things with what you call it sticking out on the side. <laughs> Wings? Are you an airline pilot? <laughs> no, but I'm. I've been pretty high in my time. <laughs> Did you ever have any close calls as a pilot? Oh yes, sir. Especially since they moved move the men's room to the back of the plane. I was on a, a flight from New York to L.A. a couple weeks ago, and the plane lost an engine. Oh, don't worry, it'll turn up. <laughs> you know, there's a lot, lot of pr pressure being a pilot flying way out there and high in the air and all above all those white fl fluffy things. Clouds? You sure you're not a pilot? At the same time, time it, it's, a, it's quite a sobering thought and a very inspiring feel, feeling to realize that there are hundreds, hundreds of people on my plane all depending on me. <laughs> and to that I... I happen to hold, hold their lives right in the palm, palm of my hand. <laughs> oh, oh, I got it, I got it. Yeah. I got I got uh, I got to get to the airport cuz I'm flying a 74 740. I'm flying a 747 to L London tonight and then the plane is scheduled to leave uh precisely 1 hour and 40 43 minutes ago. <laughs>
collection is is just that it's a collection of the greatest moments of 10 years of the variety show 245 variety shows and i cut them down and presented to this audience some of the great moments with some of the superstars that appeared on on these shows you know you know sinatra john wayne uh, you know Bob Newhart, uh, every major star that you can think of, Jimmy Stewart, and they all, Orson Welles, everybody blended in as if it were one, working with Dean. And everybody had a good time. It was a party. It was one hell of a party. And it, it was worth it, you know. And everybody can relate to Dean. The young people today can relate to Dean because they look at him sitting there with a tuxedo and they go, geez, that's kind of cute, isn't it? Look at that guy, the way he handles that cigarette, the way he smiles, the way he looks at you. I bet he was a nice guy. And I can tell you right now, he was the nicest guy. He was the nicest guy I ever knew. Bar none, no contest. And what you saw was what he was. Cute, nice, charming, decent, and a great performer. The best I ever saw. Hey, Ernest. Mm. You want to help me with the station break announcement? I shoes. Where's the cue card? Uh, <laughs> you all cue card person. Here I am. Martin. Ernie, this is our cue car girl, Victoria Hale. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pleased to meet you. The pleasure is all mine. Not if I can help it. <laughs> Dean, I don't see any cue cards. Where are they? Well, tell them, honey. All over my body. Do you think, Ernie? <laughs> Do you remember that picture, Marty, that I was in? Oh, yes. Well, uh, there was this scene where my buddy says to me, well, what do you feel like doing tonight, Marty? And I said, I, I don't know, Ange. What do you feel like doing tonight? And, uh, and he says, uh, I don't know, Marty. What do you feel like doing? I just figured out what I want to do tonight. <laughs> Do you like being a cue card girl? Oh, yes. I think it's a wonderful experience. Well, I can see that success hasn't gone to your head. <laughs> no, I found a better place. Uh... Hey, Dean, isn't it difficult to write on her? No, no. The only hard part is getting her in the typewriter. Oh. <laughs> oh come on, Aaron. Uh, let's read the uh, announcement. Uh, We'll, we'll be, be right back, back folks. So, so well, wait a minute a second. What? Wait a second. I lost my place. Oh, that's all right. You can take her to my place. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, folks, so don't, don't go away. Ooh. Hey, Dean, what are you doing? <laughs> I got a lip reading. <laughs> I got him on right. <laughs> what are you playing? I, I, know, I know that one. I know that one. How I love the kisses of Dolores Till I found out 
she was Morris. <laughs> My buddy Ken here just joined Bachelors Anonymous. It's a great club. Whenever you feel like getting married, you call a member, and he sends over a woman in a torn bathrobe, curlers in her hair, and grease all over her face. <laughs> the sweetest song. I've ever heard Or have a drink on me <laughs> Stick that in Ken I guess I'm gonna leave you now Before I go I... You think about this You show me a man who is filthy rich And I'll show you a wealthy hippie Come and see in here. Yeah. Penny, my baby. I'm so worried about you. Mama, what's the matter? Oh, I've been so worried. I was up all uh, night. Mrs. Lane, why are you worried? Oh, you. Oh, yes, of course. You're that Italian boy, Marvin, who sings on my Kenny show. <laughs> so worried about you now that you're such a big star, a television show of his own. You'll be meeting a lot of girls, members of the opposite, the opposite. Sex? You're an animal. What's the matter with the word sex? Marvin, in front of Penny, we do not, and I repeat, not use four-letter words like S-E-dash-X. Yeah. My baby, I've got to tell you the facts of life. I, I can't put it off any longer. Why? Did, did somebody get his teddy bear in trouble? <laughs> Mrs. Lane, you're going to tell him the facts of life here, right now? It's better he hears it from me than he picks it up from people who hang around pianos. <laughs> hey, he'll never hear anything from me. I come from a strict home. When all the other kids were playing doctor, I was playing dentist. <laughs> should be seen, not heard. <laughs> the main thing to remember, dear, is love doesn't have to be cheap or right now. Love can be beautiful, except maybe with your father. <laughs> See, Kenny, when two people are mutually attracted to each other, there's a whole chemical reaction. Uh, Mrs. Lane. I'm oh, not now, Marvin. I'm rolling. Oh, oh, Someday you're going to meet a wonderful girl. Heaven forbid. <laughs> and you and that girl are going to want to live together. Oh, no, Ma. I just got my own room. <laughs> Your mother's right, Ken. There's a lot more exciting things in life than sneaking down to the A&P and sniffing cantaloupes. Don't make sarcastic, Marvin. Remember the old saying, if you break a mother's heart from this show, you can depart. <laughs> now, what was it, Ken? of life are as follows. A boy and a girl meet. They fall in love. They get married. They leave the church and that's when it happens. What's that? They go to visit his mother. <laughs> now, 
I don't want to be late for my chiropractor's appointment. But before I go, I want you to play that song that I love. And Marvin, <coughs> cough, baby. If you want, you can sing. But remember that somebody might be listening. All right. <laughs> I'm upon my knees, honey boy. Does he play beautiful, huh? Believe me, it was worth every penny to have his fingers straightened. Boy, only three, sonny boy. You think he's good now? Just wait a few years till his feet reach the pedals. You know we have no one there, no way of showing what you mean to me. Not too loud, Marvin. Remember, you wouldn't even be on the show if Kenny didn't need a token Italian. <laughs> he looks so nice. It breaks my heart when I think someday his hair is gonna turn dark. <laughs> still have you Sonny Boy Never mind the facts of life Kenny, you should never use your hands for anything but the piano <laughs> Another busy day on Wall Street Here's a late news item Underworld Kingpin Louis Sinister was released today from the federal penitentiary after he turned state's evidence against the notorious O'Brien gang. Local authorities fear for Sinister's life. Oh, so oh, oh my goodness, look who's here! My favorite customer, Mr. Luigi Sinister, how you doing? Oh my goodness, you look wonderful. What have you been doing? Six months? <laughs> you know, I heard about that. You look all dressed up. Don't tell me you're getting a coming out party, right? Okay, let me have your coat. Here you go. Okay, that's beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. And it's still warm. All right, that's nice. Let me put it over here. Gee whiz, you look very nice. You got a tan. Did they let you walk around in the yard? <laughs> here you go. There you are. All right, here you go. All right. No, 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 no. Take it easy. It's just a cigarette lighter. It's just a cigarette lighter. Oh, my goodness. You got me all excited. Here you go. Here, just put that away. Just put that away. Come on. Sit down, Mr. Sinister. Right over here. Your favorite chair. Okay. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Here you go. Okay. That's nice. Oh, just relax. And here's your nice paper. What would you like to talk about today, Mr. Sinister? Sports? Politics? Jokes? You want some jokes? All right, that'd be good. Oh, maybe you want to talk about crime does not pay. <laughs> right okay <laughs> all right i'll get you jokes i'll get you a nice hot towel you'll relax okay All right, you kids, get away from here with those firecrackers. 
carcass. Oh, what a noisy neighborhood. Oh, oh, hot towel, hot towel. Ooh, you took that like a man. That's good. All right, here, let me get you. Ah, beautiful. That's nice. Boy, that really made you relax fast. Okay. You just get your leg up here. Okay. Good. <laughs> hey, did you see that show, Dynasty? You know, I never miss it. I never look at it, so I never miss it. <laughs> show that guy Blake Carrington he's so mean uh, you look a little like he got a better haircut though that's one thing All right. did you hear the joke about the guy who came home two hours early he walks in his bedroom he sees a cigar in the ashtray he says to his wife where'd the cigar come from and from the voice the closet says and from the closet a voice says <laughs> Mr. S. Okay, here you go. All right, beautiful. That, oh, easy does it. Okay. Boy, you really must have had a, a late night last night. <laughs> okay. Oh, yesterday it was so cold. I saw a congressman with his hands in his own pocket. <laughs> Sit up, sit up. Okay, okay. Here you go. Let me get your arm down here. Okay. Let me swing this chair over here a little bit. Okay, that's good. All right. Hey, what do you get? What do you get when you cross? <laughs> Let me get this hair over here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get when you cross an owl and a goat? A hoon nanny. <laughs> no good. <laughs> all right, all right. A man goes to the moon. He sees a 12-foot gorgeous lady. He walks up to her and he says, take me to your ladder. I'll see you later, later. <laughs> okay. Now, a drunk puts a dime in a meter. It goes to 60. The drunk says, oh my goodness, I lost 100 pounds. <laughs> oh, you like that one. You like that one. Wait a minute. Okay. Let me sit you up here again. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Good. A man has a new Mercedes. And he's driving it. He wraps it around a pole. A policeman comes along and says, that's how the Mercedes bends. a chicken on the rotisserie. Oh, so all of me. A drunk walks by, he looks at him, he says, you got a lovely voice, but I think your monkey's on fire. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, doctor says to this woman, you're going to have to have an operation. The woman says, wait a minute, I want a second opinion. The doctor says, okay, you're also very ugly. <laughs> Let me get this hair in your ear. <laughs> you're all done. 
I, oh my goodness, I do, I'll call your mother. I do, oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for a life transplant. Here's one of the funniest guys I know, Mr. Bob Newhart. As, as more and more high-rise buildings go up in our cities, there's a proportionate increase in the number of people who jump off of these buildings. And it's becoming quite a problem, but psychologists tell us that there is a definite way of handling it. The, the main thing is to never issue any direct commands or to try to talk the person out of it. And perhaps the most important is to be very, very casual. Now, I would like to show you a psychologist Who's been called to deal with a man on the ledge? I think he would probably light up a cigarette and handle it something like this. Oh, hi there. You bet your cheeks is high. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you're thinking about jumping, are you? It's the only way out. <laughs> this is your first time? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna try and stop me, are you? No, no, no. I, me, I, I'm on my way to work. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Matter of fact, I usually walk around the buildings. You know, it kind of helps me unwind. You know, <laughs> you, you don't you don't happen to be in advertising by any chance, do you? Yeah, I am masterminded the campaign for Harold Stassen. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> well, it's more than a lucky guess. We we get an awful lot of advertising people out here. Uh, the reason I asked, there are some advertising guys on the southeast corner. I thought maybe you might know them. I, did, I didn't get their names. Um, one, one guy had the Edsel account. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know you're drawing a hell of a crowd for a weekday, you know that? <laughs> yeah, jump, jumping has really fallen off the last... <laughs> <laughs> No, no pun intended, you know. <laughs> no, seriously, you take, uh, oh, 1929. You, you literally couldn't get out on this ledge in, in 1929. <laughs> 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 you, you, you see the cart down there? Hmm? Where? Yeah, that, that's it, down there, the cart. That's uh, uh, Sam, the hot dog man. He, Hi, Sam, how are you? Yeah, I would just tell him, hello, crowd, for a Thursday, isn't it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, have, have you eaten, by the way? Well, I'd, I'd hate to eat and run. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, why don't I... I, I, I two, Sam. You, you like everything on it? Yeah, uh, uh, two with everything, Sam. No, uh, no, no, make one to go, Sam, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, who, who are those guys down there with a net? Uh, I, I think some fink turns you in. No, those are firemen. I don't care who they are. They're, they're in my way. <laughs> I, 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 give, I give you a little tip there. You, you, you might kind of edge your way to the corner of the building, you know, then they start to follow you. Then you run back here and jump. <laughs> they, they, they get all confused, you know. They pull on the net. They'll never make it back in time. Well, I hope they fall for it. <laughs> fall for it. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Listen, I, I really ought to be going, you know. Listen, I, I'd love to stay and catch you. 
but I got a hot dog waiting down. Well, I'll, I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> Listen, I, I tell you what, if you're not in much of a hurry, why don't the both of us go down and we'll get our hot dog and we'll talk it over, huh? Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Let, let's go down. Fine, fine. I, I'll go through the window. I'll help you through, huh? One, one. You know, in every marriage, there's always little chores that a wife doesn't particularly like to do. Sometimes it's cooking, sometimes it's cleaning, and in some marriages, the wives are just not affectionate. Ah, but here's an enterprising wife who hired somebody to perform this little chore for her. Yvette, I think I hear my husband coming home. Would you answer the door? Hello, darling. Hello, gosh, you look pretty tonight, sweetheart. That's all right. <laughs> Certainly have come home in a good mood, but darling, you look exhausted. Oh. Why don't you come over here and sit down? Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Oh, well, can't tell you how good it feels to be home. You notice anything different about me, darling? What do you mean? My perfume. Hmm, I'll say. Stop it, Roger. Oh, Roger. Roger, Roger, stop it. You'll wake the children. So what, then? I will marry. You know, Roger, I'm the luckiest woman in the world being married to you. And this may surprise you, but you know, some of my girlfriend's husbands act Surely, fool around on the outside. Well, not me. I got everything I want at home. I'll never forget our wedding night. <laughs> Neither will I. <laughs> Neither will I. I was so happy and relaxed, I slept like a baby. That's funny. I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> Darling, what do you say we skip dinner and turn in early tonight? Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> They say you can't get good help these days. The pleasure having you on my show. Oh, the pleasure's mine, Dean. You've always been my favorite singer. Hmm? In fact, when I was a child, my mother used use your records to put me to sleep. Really? Yeah, she used to hit me over the head with them. <laughs> no kidding, Dean. You're my idol. I worship the ground you crawl on. <laughs> So enamored am I of your many talents that I've compiled a series of slides depicting the highlights of your career. Yeah, I'd like to see them sometime. Well, grab some popcorn and sit down. Now watch the screen up there. Because here comes the first slide. Lights out, please. Now here you are, Dean, just starting out in show business. And there's the elephant trainer handing you the shovel. <laughs> now, there's the first room you ever played in. And that's her husband chasing out the window. <laughs> here's your first exposure on national television. And here's Ed Sullivan making you put your clothes back on. <laughs> Now, here you are making a record with a girl singer. Here's Frank Sinatra with the same girl breaking your record. <laughs> How'd that one get in there? Well, now, here you are smashing Frank's patrol in retaliation. 
Hey, what's that blank slide up there for? Well, it's intimation. I thought you might want to go to powder room. <laughs> Never mind. I'll wait till after the cartoon. <laughs> so be it. Act two. <laughs> Here is a, here's a group of female admirers screaming while you sing. Now, here you are closing the shower curtain. Here's a memorable shot of you shaking hands with the queen. Now, here you are shaking hands with his roommate. And finally, as a fitting climax to your industrious career, here's the mayor of your hometown, Steubenville, Ohio, giving you the key to the city. And, of course, you know what that is. Yeah, that's all the women in Steubenville changing their locks. <laughs> It was a good funeral. Good funeral. We gave him a good signal. No man could want more. He was a good man, George. We won't see his like again. Salt of the earth he was. He was salt of the earth. Mm. Still, he had a good run. Good run. Funny, he never married. Who? <laughs> George. Oh, him. <laughs> yes, funny, he never married. Not that he'd ever had the chance. When he was young, I mean, he was good-looking enough. Almost too good-looking. He could have any girl he wanted. Any girl he wanted. With that blonde hair of his. Oh, yes. Those big blue eyes. Yeah. And those dimples. Those dimples. <laughs> Any girl he chose. Yeah. Funny he never married. <laughs> he had compensations, though. Compensations. Other interests. Scouting. <laughs> he was very keen on scouting. Oh, very keen. Oh, yes. He liked scouting even in his later years. You only have to see a troop of scouts go by and his eyes would light up. <laughs> Nostalgia, I suppose. Funny he never married. Funny. He was a funny man in many ways. The way he walked. That was funny. His hips. Oh, that was funny. And his voice. High pitched. <laughs> Almost to a point of a falsetto. Love flowers, he did. Oh, always smelled of Lily of the Valley. Funny man in many ways. Yes. Always Lily of the Valley. Always. All gardenias on special occasions. <laughs> Is this funny man in many ways? Funny, yes. But kind. Kind, oh, very kind. 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 Almost too kind. <laughs> yes. Yes, he, he let himself be taken advantage of. He could never turn anybody away from his door. It was always a bed for any waif, 
stray, soldier, sailor. <laughs> Especially sailors. He got on with sailors. I never knew him to turn a sailor away. In fact, they didn't even have to come to him. He'd, he'd go looking for them. Never spared himself. Funny, he never married. He'd have made a good husband. Oh, he would, he would, he would. There's no denying that. He's a very good husband. He'd have made him. He could cook, knit, <laughs> sew. His house was always clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. Clean, clean. Whistle. <laughs> he was a happy man, though. Oh, yes, he was happy enough. And he was never happier than when he was dressing up. True. <laughs> Do you remember how he loved his mother of pearl purse? <laughs> and how sad he was when he lost it on the all-night bus. <laughs> never happier than when he was dressing up. Oh, never. Theatrical streak, I suppose. I suppose. <laughs> All in all, he was funny. You know, it's funny he never married. <laughs> funny. What? You never married. <laughs>
Good day, sir. Uh, may I help you, please? Yes. Uh, do you have any plays with elephants in them? <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Do we... you have any plays with elephants in them? I don't. I. I don't seem to follow you, sir. Well, I want to see a play with an elephant in it. <laughs> with an elephant in it. Yes. Well, but I. No. I. There, I'm sorry. There is not a play at this time on the West End playing with an elephant in it. I'm terribly sorry, but thank you so much for uh, coming Because I had my heart set on elephants, you see. <laughs> oh, why don't you go to the circus? Oh, are there elephants in there? Oh, yes, there's, there's lots of elephants and seals. I don't like seals. <laughs> Have you ever been with elephants and without seals? What was that again? You want with elephants and without seals? Well, I, I don't think so. I'm positive, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you uh, so much for coming. Um, what, what about that? Oh, that's Hamlet. Um, are there any elephants in that? <laughs> Frankly, not all that many. You see, Shakespeare was rather frugal with his use of elephants in his play. And to be perfectly honest with you, sir, I, I do not think there is one. I must honestly admit there is not one at all. In Hamlet, there are no elephants. Thank you so, so much. much trouble, yeah? Oh, no trouble. So thank you. Come again. I'll call back after lunch to see if anything with elephants has cropped up in the interim. Yes, lovely. You do that. Thank you so much. Oh, um, um, while, while I'm here, um, do you have any plays with nudist ice skaters or naked ladies playing football? <laughs> with what, sir? Uh, naked no. ladies playing football. Uh, no, I'm terribly sorry. We haven't. Uh, uh, are you sure? I'm positive, sir. Well, uh, what about this play where um, this woman loves this man and after many trials and tribulations they go off together yes! on an elephant? No! Look, I have a perfect play for you. Why don't you try and visit Agatha Christie's great, great thriller, The Mousetrap? It's very popular with people of your type. I don't like mice. <laughs> There's no mouse in the mouse track. Hey, that's where you're going, is there? Well, no, you see, but it's very exciting. You see, there's this whole group of people, yes. and one of them is mysteriously murdered. By an elephant? By an elephant, yes. <laughs> and are there clowns in it? Oh, yes, there's lots of clowns. I don't like clowns. Oh, no, no. Well, there's no clowns in it at all. See, no clowns at all, sir. Oh, well, what are they, then? Uh, they're, uh... Well, 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 what do you like, sir? Naked ladies playing football. Oh, yes! <laughs> Look, there's lots of naked ladies playing football. In fact, so the plot involves a group of naked ladies playing football on the lawn, and one of them is mysteriously murdered by, by the elephant. elephant. Yes, yes, by the elephant. Yes. 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 Are there midgets involved? Oh, yes, there's a, a, a midget. There's a midget, uh, but it's... Uh, 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 police inspector? Yes, you know it. There is a midget police inspector. And this midget police inspector, he enters... Playing the banjo. Yes, a brilliant playing the banjo. A brilliant banjo playing midget policeman enters. And he, he gathers all the suspects into the library, oh, sir. Who are, who are they? Well, there's... Uh, who do you want? Douglas? Oh, there's lots of jugglers. So uh, see? see the jugglers? Donald Duck. Uh, Donald Duck is there, yes. Ah, uh, well, 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 Luke Raid in the news. Oh! <laughs> yes, Luke Raid in the news is in there. Margaret Rutherford on ice skate. Yes, Margaret Rutherford on ice skate. Yes, the Queen. The Queen is there, yes, sir. Yes, she is there. And uh, where are the seals? No, there's no seal. Sir, so listen, just between you and me, the seal <laughs> establishes alibi early in the first act, and he, he does to go home. <laughs> Uh, where does Engelbert Humperdinck fit in? <laughs> who were they? Engelbert Humperdinck. Engelbert who? Humperdinck. Oh, they're there. Yes, they're all there. Yes. And, and, and uh, who did it? 
the elephant? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. He was merely shielding. Oh, yes, see, and the, and the midget banjo, brilliant banjo player, <laughs> uh, Inspector, he, he reveals the real killer in the library. Engelbert Humperdinck. Yes, it is Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your ticket. The curtain falls. Everyone loves the play. It's 30 shillings. Please, no. You don't even have to pay, sir. You may keep the ticket. You may go to the theater. Wait, 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 wait. Short last week. Oh, no. Play. Uh, with giraffes. Oh, you, with, with giraffes? Giraffes. Oh, yes, there's several giraffes in Othello. Othello. Oh, you love them. Oh, they're, they're midgets and there's banjo playing and everything. And then Margaret Ruffin is silent and there's ice skating. Yes. Every day is Ladies' Day with me. I'm quite at their disposal all the while. And my pleasure it is double if they come to me in trouble. For I always find a way to make them smile. The little darlings. I've no doubt I should have married long ago. Is the proper thing to do, you'll all agree. But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on her. Every day is Lady's Day with me.
No one is there. Don't you love the farce? My fault, I fear. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear. Where are the clowns? Send in the clowns. Don't bother. different time another generation is it too difficult to clown about minority rights free love political corruption and such like themes for modern comedy personally if I had the choice I'd go for the clowns wouldn't you (laughs) 